All right, so today I am replacing the palm rest and the keyboard on a Lenovo ThinkPad X220T convertible uh, tablet laptop. So it's a little hard to see from this far away, but I'm just going to zoom in. Well, I'll place this down actually and I'll zoom in just to show the damage on the palm rest. And it's been like this since I've owned it. I got it used. Um, I got several, several of them used, but decided to keep this one because I really like it. Um, classic keyboard design. And just an overall really functional laptop um, with a little bit of upgrades. So we have a big chunk missing here. And likewise on the other side, we have a fairly sizable chunk missing as well. And so these are, they have been eyesore since I've been using the laptop and I finally caved and just bought a, uh, a used palm rest, or excuse me, a brand new palm rest. And I thought while well, I'm at it, I may as well order a new keyboard too and replace them both because this one, although it does look okay, especially on this video, if you do zoom in, you'll see somewhere on the keys um, and kind of hard to tell, just some of the letters are worn out, um, and just some marks here and there. Overall, it's in not in bad shape, it'll make a really good, uh, replacement if something happens to the newer one. Um, at least I'll have a second on hand. Alright, so let's begin with how to do this. First, we want to take the battery out, of course. And we'll go ahead and start removing some screws on the underside of the laptop. And pretty well everything's labeled. Um, you'll see there's one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, seven screws to remove for the palm rest. And for the keyboard we have one and two. So what we'll do first is take off the RAM cover. And those are two screws, just like that. Okay, I didn't mention this, but all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver. So there's my RAM where I have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Uh, one three 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 megahertz. I'd like to upgrade to 1600, but uh, all, all in due time. So I already have a screw missing here, so I'm not going to have to worry about taking that one out, but I'm going to time lapse the rest of them. Okay, we'll flip it back over and I believe I will need a flathead screwdriver. Small. And we just want to use that to help pull up the keyboard, like so. If I'm remembering this correctly, I haven't taken this off for a while. Um, yeah. Fairly straightforward. And we can just simply unplug that from the motherboard. And we'll place this off to the side. And to remove the palm rest, first want to unplug the ribbon cable from the motherboard, which is this blue piece right here. Having some tweezers might help, but you can just use the flathead screwdriver too. It's very easy. And now, just need to gently pry up. This one's been taken off before, and I'll show you why in a moment here. 
is here, just like the X230T, we have the spot for the MSATA solid state drive, um, the Wi-Fi card, and the Bluetooth card. Um, so for this swap in particular, we have to remove the touchpad and place it, of course, onto this. So to do so, zoom in a little bit here. There's just a couple screws to replace and I just would like to pause the video for a moment so I can look for them without just running the tape. Alright, so we have some tape to remove. We have a screw here, 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 and here. And I'll just take my little mini flathead screwdriver and just pull up on the tape gently. I don't want to tear it necessarily, but I'll just rather lift it up and peel off like so. And here we see two smaller screws that will also require the Phillips head. And now, possibly a smaller size bit. But let's see. No, this is good. So we'll go ahead and remove the four screws. Okay, so now we'll also use the screwdriver here to peel up this tape, which is actually not really uh, taped on at all. And we'll just gently see about taking this um, this uh, touchpad off. And I would just like to, again, pause the video and just inspect this a little bit. And also change the battery on my camera. So we have this small bit of tape right here. And I'm just going to gently pull it up with the help of this small flathead screwdriver. And I'd like to maybe reuse this tape afterwards, so I'm gonna try to not destroy it. Looks like it might help keep this in place, although we do have the four screws, so uh, in some ways the tape might be redundant, but it's there, so. Okay, it looks like we just need to pry up a little bit. I didn't quite notice before, but we have two little tabs. Okay, easy enough. All right. So I'm just gonna get this metal piece out of the way. And you can see here where we need to pull the touchpad out. We have a little, I don't know what to call this at the moment, like a, a little hinge here. And we just need to make sure we don't break those little plastic tabs. So I'm gonna get a closer look at this and just try to do that. And it looks like we can just gently pull down on either end. And there we go. Perfectly intact. So we'll place the inferior palm rest over there. And let's put this new one back. Let's put it together with the new one. All right, so we just need to click it in on either end, it looks like. Uh, truthfully, truth, truthfully, it's not complicated at all. I think once you take a look at it, it's very approachable. And we'll just do this in the reverse order. Place this metal structure piece back on. And let's put the screws back on. Oh, of course. Don't forget to apply the redundant tape. 
There we go. I guess it wouldn't be complete without doing that. Okay, we'll take our tiny little pieces of reflective tape and put them back over top of the screws. Um, if anything, just because they were there in the first place. This tape isn't exactly adding any structural integrity, but um, yeah, I guess it looks shiny and that's cool. Okay. It looks good and feels good too. Let's put this back on the laptop. Um, I should also point out there's a little slot for the ribbon cable to go through right here. At least I think that's what it's for. It's actually kind of an awkward fit. Maybe that's not true at all. I'm going to pull it back out and not do that. I think I was wrong. So I'm just going to place this like so and gently clip it onto the laptop. There we go. And two satisfying clicks later, we're ready to reattach the cable to the system board. We gotta make sure we can use the touchpad. For this, I'll use tweezers. Now you see there's two little tiny tabs on either end of the ribbon cable, and it's quite clear when it's been fitted into the, into the uh, slot there. Notice it right away. Now I'll just take out the fresh, uh, new old keyboard. It looks really nice. All right, so let's plug it into the board and hope for no problems. Now, before we go ahead and completely place this back, let's boot this up and just make sure that we're doing okay. The system's gonna turn on with new components installed. Let's turn this over and stick the battery back in. And let's try booting this up for the very first time with a new keyboard. Okay. Okay, so far so good. Wonderful. We'll just let this boot. It should be fairly fast. The MSATA SSD does make a really big difference. And I highly recommend installing one into your system if you haven't already. And I don't know if you did notice, but my hard drive bay is empty. I don't currently have anything in there. I don't really require the space um, but in the future I might install something if I need it. I've always got some kind of hard drive kicking around. So yeah, it looks like we're really good to go. Yeah, it feels really nice. It looks great. The uh, touchpad is of course working just fine. Uh, let's open up the text file and just do some random typing. Cool. And of course the 
characteristic red dot works perfectly well. I'm satisfied. Okay, so I know it's kind of hard to tell. Um, I'm not the best cameraman or the best uh, screen recorder, but the keyboard's working. There's a bunch of random digits on the screen in the text document. Um, I don't think I need to prove further. I'm just gonna delete that using the keyboard. Oh. And let's boot this down and unplug the battery again and finish up the install of the keyboard. All right. So here we have our beautiful brand new keyboard, brand new palm rest. Um, I'm really liking it. Uh, my X220 tablet laptop looks totally good. Um, super stoked to have this upgrade. Uh, and you know, it's totally worth it. This was not very expensive. I'll list the prices in the uh, description below because I can't quite remember them at the moment. And I'll maybe uh, also post the links to the uh, eBay page that I bought it off of for as long as it's up. And I suppose the only thing missing is the i5 sticker, Windows 7 sticker, and this Lenovo Enhanced. Experience 2.0 sticker. I might, I might take a, well, I might take a heat gun and lightly take these stickers off and try to reapply them on here. But honestly, I know what's inside this thing. I don't really need the sticker to prove it. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with just this nice black finish. Uh, yeah, so I think this video is complete. If you're ever thinking about doing this for your X220, I definitely think you should. This laptop's awesome. Uh, it's serving me super well. Every day I use it, I love it. And it makes me happy. So I think if it will make you happy, you should do it too. And as you can see, it works perfectly. It's super simple. Um, I believe anyone can do it. So hopefully this video helped you figure out how. If you have any comments or if you have any feedback or if you have any questions or if you want to tell me that I did something wrong, just post in the comments below. I'm likely to respond. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching and I hope you learned something.